Hello everybody, good morning. Carla Nicole. So um, this is live um, for the Alone series. We're still on the same topic, which is um, although we are alone, it does not mean we don't we have to, we have to be um, lonely. So um, I am very excited. Everybody's here. Hey Tabitha Love, so glad to see you this morning. Mookie, welcome. Um, listen, I hope everybody had a great a great weekend. Um, my weekend was fairly cool. It wasn't too crazy. It wasn't too lavish or anything. It was kind of laid back, but you know, um, hey John Todd, um, I'm so glad that um, you guys are here. Um, you know, it's funny. Um, this this is like I said, my favorite favorite um, series so, so far, which is um, the Alone series. And the reason I love this series is because there's so many people that um, are alone but feel like it's just really um, a grim time. But this is the best time to work on yourself, um, work on the things you want to do without being obligated to someone else. I think a lot of times we lose sight on the fact that even though we are um, alone, we um, can actually be very busy on other things we want to get done. Um, we can be busy on inspiring others. We can be busy on so many other things rather than looking at the downside, which is I'm not obligated to someone. I'm not in a relationship. Um, so, you know, my main reason for this whole um, Alone series is because of this. I want to encourage many people about how beautiful it is to be alone but yet um, still excited about life because just because you don't have someone doesn't mean that you can't be enjoying life. So I want to welcome everybody. Hey, uh, thanks so much Mookie for the compliment. I'm so glad you guys are here. Listen, um, as everybody knows, this is Sunday. So this is Mommy Sunday and I got my baby boy with me. So we are waiting in line to, <laughs> to sit be seated at IHOP. But um, I didn't want to, you know, tell you guys I was going to be here and not show up. So you know me. I don't care. Um, I'm going to still be here to inspire. So let's roll our sleeves up. I hope you guys got your pens and pads ready because this one is going to be very um, inspiring and encouraging for you guys to focus on something that I think is very, very important. In life, we have a tendency to finger point or shove off our self-accountability for some things that goes on in our life. Um, a lot of times, blaming someone else for uh, the lack in our life is so, so frustrating. And so, um, okay, thanks Tabitha for letting me know. It might be, I don't know, but um, let me know if you still have that problem in a second. But um, the, the main issue is trying to stay focused on being accountable for what um, your life has. You know, a lot of times we lose sight on the fact that um, in our life we have very, 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 um, uh, well, we have a lot of time where we can focus on how can we and, and here we are, we're getting ready to get seated, so hopefully I can really dive in. But um, the fun part about it is, um, <laughs> hi, how are you? I'm wonderful. Um, so the, the thing about it is, thank you. So the thing about it is trying to figure out a way to encourage people um, and, and doing what we need to do about being alone. But here's the thing, when we're alone, we can find ourselves miserable, or thank you so much, love. Um, we can find ourselves miserable because we are alone. Um, oh, my name is Sandra. Hi, Dad. Thank you. Can you go on a drink? Let me get a coffee, please. Coffee? Um, and then whatever he wants to drink. Orange juice. Orange juice. He wants orange juice. Typical, typical man, right? <laughs> so anyway, loves, uh, so let me get back to what I was saying. So we're going to talk about blame. So finger pointing and blaming other people for something that we can totally be accountable for. Um, awesome, Tabitha. Thank you. I'm so sorry, love. We're just in the middle of all this craziness. So how do we show how to be self-accountable? First of all, we have to learn to detach from blaming someone else. Um, a lot of times in life, we can find ourselves wanting to finger point 
about you know different circumstances in our life that we've had to deal with. Uh, we'll just say, for instance, our parents, things that they didn't do, or things that they said, or 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 circumstances we had to live under, or things that we felt that they they just disappointed us on, or even mates or relationships, our boyfriends or our mans or our girlfriends and our women. You know, they didn't do certain things that we expected them to do. And so uh, maybe some circumstances happen and, and our life falls a little short. Well, now I want to say really fast that there are things circumstantial that happens in your life that might not be to your um, dismay. It may have happened, yes, because you know, um, of circumstances or, or people, outsiders doing things that caused you to be in a life of turmoil. And that blame there is definitely worth saying because you would had nothing to do with it. Good morning, Pamela. Glad to see you. Um, so with that said, those are not those are not the issues I'm talking about. I'm talking about, you know, past situations that happen. Um, and you believe that because of those past situations that happen, it has now caused such an immense lack in your life. But I want, I want you to think about something very important. Um, you know, a lot of times, thank you so much. Are you ready, you ready to order? Not yet, not yet. A lot of times um, we find ourselves frustrated because, give us a couple minutes. Um, we find ourselves frustrated because um, our family or our, or our husbands or wives or our kids or our siblings or our family members or friends may have failed, failed in different departments or even business partners, failed us some kind of way. And we now have to regroup, reinvent, fix stuff. We try to fix stuff, you know, and when someone uh, kind of throws you in a derail, in life is very frustrating but you know I always want to encourage people this is very important when there's a lack in your life okay this is very important so please write this down as a big big note if you have a lack due to someone else or something else that happened please do not allow that to inspire you to get a rage in you to where you want to now start blaming that person because when you're up against the ropes in life, no matter if it's um, career, no matter if it's relational, no matter if it's family oriented, if you have that situation come up, please do not allow that to stop you. When we get knocked out sometimes in life, we must get up from that knockout. We, we must get up from our failures. We must get up from our lack. Sometimes I think that we believe that we don't have to lack in life, and we do. Basically, you learn so much from the lack because, you know, back in the day, if you think about the old school families, they had very little to work with. But in their lack, they learned how to create other things. Like I was always told by a friend that, you know, she was an elder friend of mine. And when I lost my mom, you know, um, she was like a nanny to me. And one of the things she always told me, baby girl, you will never go hungry if you have milk, bread, eggs, and juice in your home. You will never go hungry. And I thought, really? She said, always remember, that's your staple. You can make so much out of that, those three or four items that can help you. And I thought, well, okay. So what did she give me? She gave me the basis of if you get in a pinch, if you get financially strained, you will not go hungry if you have the basics, which is the orange juice, the, the eggs, the milk, and the bread. And I thought, okay, this is something that's important. You know, um, I think a lot of times we don't think about that. But it's easier to say, well, it's their fault that I'm in this position. It's their fault that I don't have the rise in my life that I want. It's their fault because I can't move. That's not true. Now listen, we have the time and, and space in our life to where we can be angry. We can be frustrated. We can be bitter for a while. But you don't want to live in that space. If you're angry for something that happened because of uh, some type of relationship went awry or some type of um, financial distress happened, don't allow that to kill your spirit. 
to where you're finding yourself constantly aggravated, constantly frustrated to where you don't want to get up and say, I can do this again. Life is about different seasons. The seasons change, you know, we, we're going through a season change right now. We had um, the time change, you know, we had um, spring one minute, then here, open this for mommy, please. Um, we had we had spring, we have fall, we have all different seasons in life. And is winter angry when spring shows up? Is fall angry when, you know, it's time's up and winter shows up? No. It flows and it becomes liquefied and it's fluid. Why? Because it's a part of the seasons. So we must also operate the same way. Yes, there can be things that you can be upset about or, or, or very, you know, frustrated with. And that's because you're human. And of course, there's going to be things that people don't do what they need to do. So it can be very frustrating. But, um, and give me three of those, Bray. So you want to make sure that when you go through those headaches or those turmoils, or like my dad says, when life gets you up against the ropes, you want to think about how can I um, change my life for the better? Um, and can I do it? Absolutely. You know, some of the worst things I think that we believe in our mind is that life comes with no pain. Get your order yet. Not yet. She's she was I told her to give me a couple minutes, but I'll oh, take okay. an order. You can take okay. an order. Um let me get the um Western omelet omelet, please. And would you like hash browns or pancakes with that? Um pancakes will be fine. And so sorry about that guys. And so <laughs> and so that is the challenge. Thank you, baby. And would you like pancakes or hash browns with it? So that is the challenge because thank you so much for taking our order. So if you can open this for me, baby, please. So the frustrating part about that is we're trying to make sure that we are not in a position where um, we believe in life that there's no pain. We are going to have pain. We're going to experience lack in life. We're going to experience ups and downs. But when you're down, this is the best time to really focus on what you have what's 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 around me that I can use right now even though I may not have a lot financially I may not have a mate right now I may not have a lavish life I may not have a working vehicle I may not have a job that I'm that's you know pretty st stable but I have something I can do which I'm a great writer or I'm a great actress or I start pouring yourself um, creatively and figuring out ways to craft around the lack. When you do that, you find yourself like, man, I didn't realize I can do some things that I didn't realize I could do. That won't cost me nothing but time and energy. And when you have that, it's like, okay, you know what? I can make a come up. I can make a come back. I can, I can maybe, maybe sometimes, and, and I say this a lot because God is, is always, um, I say the greatest comedian in my life because, you know, there's been times in my life that I was like, really God? Okay. Sometimes in life, God has us go through something that we didn't see coming. And we're like, really? Why did this happen to me, God? Why did you make this go on? And we want to get angry and all this. It's like, no, why don't we pause and see what is the lesson in this situation I'm in? Why am I here? What is it? Thank you, baby. What is it that what is it that has caused me this headache or distraction or 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 financial distress? You know, I always ask God in my prayer is to um, supply me with my needs, please. You know what I need. And then I ask God not only that, but please give me signs that I'm on the right path, that I'm doing the right thing. And I believe in that prayer, I'm getting a lot more feedback with God saying, yes, you're doing the right thing. Continue to do this. Continue to do that. And as I've done this, because, you know, like I said, the Alone series was not a series I was desiring to do. I mean, when I first got the message that God wanted me to do this series, I thought, how am I going to do this? How am I going to do this? This is a big challenge for me. 
But then I've noticed that I'm learning a lot about so much things, so many things we can do to uplift, not just others. But while I'm helping others, I'm also helping myself. So I want you guys to just think about the blaming part really fast. Don't blame others for, for things that is um, circumstantial. Because a lot of times we live in our past and what people didn't do or what people should have done and how they could have helped and all that. You know, nobody on this planet owes us anything. They don't. And even though we may think they do or we believe they should feel that they owe us something, that's not always the case. There may be people that can help you in an array of different ways, but just want to see you understand, just like we do with our children, you know, um, we want to inspire them to do different things and encourage them to, to, to make different choices by inspiring them. But like I told my daughter when she was, you know, going through a, a storm of her own, I said, I can't fix this. You have to. And I'm not going to fix it. You will have to fix this one. I'm not doing it for you. One of the toughest decisions I made was to encourage her to get herself out of a, out of a hole she dug of herself on her own. And when she did that, it empowers her now to never make that same mistake again. So again, we have to do the same thing. As adults, we are just uh, grown up children. We still have to learn the lessons, even, even though we're grown. We still have lessons we have to learn on our own. Just like I said, when we tell and encourage other people, it's like, no, we have to tell our kids, you get up and do what you need to do. I can't do everything for you. And that applies here when it comes to you. You don't want to constantly finger point and tell everybody it's their fault that I'm here in this situation. It's their fault that I'm dealing with this circumstance. It's their fault. Not always. There may be times and in, in circum certain circumstances that, you know, it may be that, but not always. We can't always say that. We have to back up and start taking accountability for our own actions. We got to take accountability for our own lives. What we do in our life right now is our responsibility, no matter what happens. And there's going to be many things that happen that, man, I, I wish I didn't have to deal with this circumstance. But sometimes, like I told my kids, the cards you're dealt in life is to teach you something. It's to inspire something in you that you wouldn't have had if you didn't have that card. You got a deck of cards in your hand. You got them, you dealing with them, you looking through them like, man, this is not a good hand right here. Do you just get up from the game and say, I give up? Or do you say, well, I'm going to play this to the best of my ability. I'm going to do what I can out of what I have. And then we're going to try to work around it to try to make things work. That's what we gotta do in life. We can't we can't constantly blame the car dealer. We can't. Hey man, you know you're at the casino and the car dealer is just shooting the cards out and you're like, okay, I got this card right here. This is not going I'm not gonna win nothing with this. Do you blame the car dealer or do you say, well, this is what I got? I'm gonna get up and leave, or do you just you try to steady and play your hand according to what you have? You, you know what? The best poker face is just not saying what you have. You know, some people out here may be broke as hell, may not have a dime of money, may not have a lot of, um, a lot of cash. They may not, but you never know it. Why? Because they're clean. They, they show up. They fix up. They make sure what I have. You may not know it. I might be eating pinto beans every day. But I'll be damned if somebody else is going to notice. Because I'm going to pursue my purpose and pursue what I got to do. Regardless of what the card is I got in my hand. So if I'm tight right now on money, what do I have to do? Well, I got to cut some corners on some wants now. Okay, so that means my cutting of corners means now I got to focus more on the needs. Like I tell my kids all the time, like, look, you got needs, you got to make sure you have lined up and taken care of. The wants come, yes, but you also have to be patient in your wants. We want stuff all right now. I want the mansion. I want the big car. I want this. I want that. That's cool. That's nice and everything, but that doesn't bring you happiness. There's a lot of multimillionaires right now on the planet, miserable, got everything they need and an abundance of more so they can go and get whatever they want when they want it 
but they don't know what it takes when they lack. What about these people when, when the financial the financial thing went awry and, and men that had an abundance of money jumped out of windows because they didn't have that wealth up overnight, lost everything? They jumped out of a window and ended it all, co committed suicide. Because of why? You base your whole happiness and your whole life on your money? What are you thinking? They never had lack. So someone that never had lack doesn't know what to do in a case where they lose everything. You can't let anything on this planet, I don't care what it is, other than your faith and your health and your family, you cannot let other stuff like money or fabulous things out here. I want to have the fabulous purses. I want to have the fabulous cars. And oh, you got the latest bugs. And do you got this? Do you got that? No, because I don't mean nothing. You can't take it with you. I'm going to give you one more thing before I leave. There was this woman that I watched um, on um, Super Soul Sunday, and um, she lost both of her legs. And she talked about her um, crossing over, that she actually passed away. And she said she had a choice to come back. And she said, do you know what it was that I thought about while I was in my death crossover? I thought about the breeze of the air on my face. I thought about all my senses that I would no longer get to experience again. And when they asked me, do you want to go back or do you want to come with us? She said, no, I want to stay. She didn't think about what kind of car she had. She didn't think about, well, when I go back, I might not be able to walk again. She thought about, I want to be able to hear. I love the feeling of the breeze on my face. This is the kind of stuff I'm talking about. But people want to sit around and get all upset about money. Do you know how miserable you will be if you you focus your whole life on money? You'll be miserable. You don't want to you don't want to live your life on that. But like I said, some of the greatest teachers that I have been around that has taught me when I was going through my struggle of losing my mama, they taught me, you do this, you got you got two children, okay? You do this to keep your life afloat. So always remember, you got to have this, 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 and this. And then they gave you, know, they give you the basics. If you have this, baby girl, your babies will never go hungry. I'm like, okay, okay. You know, this is stuff that we need to think about. But we can't always think that, well, my circumstance is this way because of this. I can go around and blame everybody else that I was struggling with my kids. I'm a single mom. And I didn't have nobody helping me. And blah, blah, blah. I can point my fingers at people all day long rather than taking that finger pointing and pointing it to myself. We need to switch. The, we need to switch. Turn it to you. And not blame yourself, but turn it towards yourself for self-accountability and do an autopsy of your life. Where did I lack? What do I do? How do I problem solve? How do I craft this to where it can begin to make a, a, a turnaround? What do I need to do to fix this? And once you do that, you'll be like, man, I didn't know. I didn't know I had this, this newfound power. Because you're wasting a lot of energy on other people and what other people aren't doing for you. So that energy you're using towards talking about what they could be doing for you is taking up, I mean, time, energy, and space that you can be focused on what you can do for yourself. Look to people and, and start searching and seeking yourself, asking God to help guide you towards people that can, uh, can, that can aid you and help you not take from you, but help it aid you in getting to where you're trying to go. But first, you have to go back to my old show, Self Inventory. You got to go there. You got to look at Self Inventory. You also have to take a look at what it is you have to do to inspire yourself. And don't get discouraged, okay? Don't get discouraged about what you don't have. The lack in life is one of the best things you can have in life because the lack helps to inspire and breed a new hunger of why you're here. Like I said, to hear from a woman that passed on and had and had the gift of choice to come back. She said, I, I decided in that moment that when I go back, I'm gonna go back with a whole new purpose in life. And she is, she's doing everything that you would not believe and imagine. Like, really? This girl is a, I mean, amazing woman. She was out of here. She crossed over. Do you hear me? 
and she didn't care about what she had, what clothes she had, the flyest gear, the, the, the most expensive makeup, all that stuff that don't mean nothing. All right, so I want everybody to share this because many people are actually at a standstill in life. They're not showing up to life. They're not fixing up to life. They're not seeing what it is in life they can do to inspire others because they don't have a life in them. Life is a gift. I say it all the time. Life is a gift. So while you are here and while you are on this side of the grass, as me and my dad say, this is the time that you want to encourage other people. But in that, when you're lack, or when, and here's another thing about lack. Lack doesn't always mean financial. Lack can mean, you know, socially. I socially don't have a social circle or I don't have people to conversate with or I don't have confidants I can confide in those kind of things that's a lack so what you need to do is you need to look to self and figure out a way how can I become more social what do I need to do to be to be able to increase my social circle you can do it it's just a means of being creative go to different places go alone it's nothing wrong with going somewhere single and by yourself it's okay you can be alone. Like I say, if you are funny acting about being alone, it's okay. Go somewhere that you don't feel alone. Just because you are alone, they don't know that. They don't know if you're waiting on somebody to show up. It don't matter. Just show up to life. Learn how to become more enjoyable to yourself. Because once you do that, you'll find yourself like, wow, I've got something. I've got something here. I can be somebody. You know, you don't have to sit around and think that your life is grim or your life is sad or your life isn't fulfilled or not enough. That's not true. It's more than enough. You are power. But just remember, when you have a card dealt, don't blame the card dealer. All right? So what you have in life, don't blame that card dealer for the cards you got dealt. Understand that that card you were dealt is what it is. Just remember, okay, that even though you took a L or, you know, you ended up getting divorced or you had a, you now have a handicap you didn't before, you lost all your money, you lost all of this, don't focus on everything you lost. Focus on what you do have and then encourage. So please focus on you. Be proud of what you are. And just because you took an L in life doesn't mean you can't inspire others, okay? And be sure to share this. This is not for just you. It's for others out here that are blaming others for what they don't have. In their lack, they don't even realize how much wisdom they're receiving in their lack. See, when you have everything, you don't get wisdom. You hear what I'm saying to you? You don't get wisdom when you have everything. It's when you, when you are like, oh, wait a minute. I didn't realize that I didn't have something. So if I didn't have something, I got to learn to, what, improvise, right? Improvise your life. Listen, yes, David, show up to life. Show up and fix up to life because life is not promised. It's not. You don't want to just be humdrum in this lifetime. You want to be excited about it. Get up and be excited about being here. Like I said, I'm so glad you guys are here. I appreciate you guys so much. I send love to all of you. Thank you, Gary, for the beautiful comment. Um, and David, I appreciate you always reaching out to me. That's, that's always humbled. You always try to get my perspective, and that's, that's not gone un unnoticed. Um, Gary, thanks for joining. Hey, Satori, glad you're here. Again, you guys could be anywhere else, but you're here with me on a Sunday, and I don't take that lightly. I'm truly humbled and honored for that. Also, one more thing. For y'all ladies, this evening, we are going to have a very nice conversation at 5 o'clock. I have a show that is called At the Crack of Dawn. We're going to talk about how we can encourage each other about um, the men. You know, how can we reconnect with men? We, I, I believe that we can, we can have a sit-down conversation about men in relationships and stuff. And gentlemen, don't get it twisted. You know I'm, I will be having a sit-down conversation with you guys also. It will be next month. 
So it's going to be at the crack of dawn with my guys, man. We're going to sit down and you guys are going to give me some feedback about what you guys are dealing with in relationships. So I can't wait. I can't wait. Like I said, it's going to be at 5 o'clock, five o'clock, ladies. So make sure you let your girls know. If you want to know about it, um, inbox me and I'll give you all the information. Please share this video, okay? I appreciate you guys so much for being here. Um, and again... I just uh, want to reiterate, don't blame others for what you're going through. You don't have to do that. All right? So it is Carla Nicole signing off. Best kept. Best kept, loves. Have a great day. Bye.